This is Twit. The biggest announcement from Apple's keynote, although the one least appreciated by the public, no doubt, is the introduction of an entirely new programming language, which is called Swift. Here to tell us all about Swift is Tim Stevens, the editor-at-large at CNET. Welcome, Tim. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. Tim, what was wrong with Objective-C? <laughs> well, I don't know that there's anything wrong with Objective-C so much. Uh, it is a little bit cumbersome and a little bit difficult to learn. And it's also fairly old. Objective-C dates back to the early 80s. And it's, of course, built on the C programming language, which itself dates back to the early 70s. So uh, you could say that perhaps it's a time uh, for a new programming language. But definitely, the, you know, the, there's a lot of interest right now in scripting languages, which give you a little bit more flexibility. And you can definitely write applications more quickly in a scripting language than in a traditional strongly typed uh, programming language. So what Swift does is it kind of takes the best of Objective-C and it also brings in a lot of aspects from a, a more modern scripting language like say Python, for example, and lets developers do a lot more interesting things more quickly. In theory, at, at least, it's a, a much more terse programming language. So you don't have to write as much as you did before, basically. Uh, and also it's got a lot of new uh, developer tools and debugging tools and that kind of thing, which should make it easier for developers to get up to speed quickly. So in terms of if, if I'm a developer in this scenario, do I have to move forward with Swift or is this an optional path forward? How would you describe it? That's what's still a little bit unclear. From what I can tell, it looks like Objective-C and Swift compile to the same bytecode, which means that basically as far as your phone or your desktop is concerned, it doesn't really matter where it came from. So because of that, you should be able to transition gradually or, or maybe even not transition at all if you're on Objective-C. But I certainly think that Apple will be throwing its developer weight behind uh, Swift going forward. Uh, I'm guessing that Xcode, their developer uh, toolkit and platform, will definitely be optimized for Swift going forward. And I think that uh, we'll definitely see a lot of interest in, in working with Swift, especially because the benchmarks that they showed show that Swift applications run much more quickly uh, than Objective-C applications, so there's a lot of potential there. So I, I think it'll be a gradual transition, but, but certainly there'll be a lot of pushing from Apple to get people over to Swift going forward. Besides the performance, do you think there's going to be any noticeable difference in the applications that are developed by Swift uh, developers uh, that will, you know, for example, will, it, will they be more standardized? Will the applications look more similar to each other? I don't think that we'll necessarily see any changes from a visual presentation standpoint. Ultimately, what you can do there remains the same as you could in Objective-C when it comes to visual controls and that kind of thing. Uh, but certainly, we could see some improvements when it comes to performance. Uh, ultimately, all that we really have to go on at this point is a couple of bar charts that Apple showed during the keynote, which showed that benchmarks on uh, Swift applications run more quickly than they do on Objective-C or certainly than uh, on Python-based applications as well. So uh, if indeed the performance uh, is true across the board and not just in those selected benchmarks, and definitely applications written in Swift could be much more responsive. You know, you could, could imagine it being like the difference between going from the 5 to the 5S without actually having to get a new phone. Hey, Tim, what about the, uh, the overall developer pool for Apple? Does Swift open up development to more and more novice developers, so to speak, you know, the newbies of the world? Yeah, I definitely think it does. I mean, there's a bit of a danger here in that it's basically throwing out this entire ecosystem of developers that, that's been built up. You know, there's a whole industry around teaching people how to write iPhone games at this point. And all that kind of goes out the window, which is a little bit uh, dangerous. But ultimately, Swift does look like it's going to be a lot easier to pick up than Objective-C and certainly a lot easier to test. Um, there's this thing, a concept called a playground within the Swift developer environment where you can very quickly and easily get code running and see the results of the code as you're writing it, which is something that you can't really easily do in Objective-C. To see that right there will make it a lot easier for novice developers to see what's going on as they're writing these applications it should be a lot easier for them so yeah i definitely think we should see a lot more new, new developers coming in i would imagine that the uh reception of this news that apple has this new operating system uh, this new programming language is going to vary according to how old the developer is for example <laughs> if you have been working on objective c for 20 years and you have this you have a huge advantage because you have all that experience, whereas uh, another developer who maybe has spent a, a year learning it isn't going to be too vexed by this uh, information. So this kind of has a – this is going to be received badly by some developers, isn't it? Yeah, I, I spoke with a couple of developers at, at WWDC yesterday to get their thoughts, and some of them were very excited, uh, but but all of them expressed a little bit of fear uh, at the the learning curve here, having to pick up a new programming language entirely. The syntax, though, is very similar to C. Uh, ultimately, uh, I think that people will be able to transition fairly quickly if they want to. But again, it, it looks like there's still a path there for those developers who are on Objective-C, who are happy there and who don't want to move forward. I think that they'll be able to stay there for, for quite a while anyway. Yeah, I was impressed by the fact that Apple kept this so secret. 
Uh, I'm not aware of anyone who had this news, and I guess it's easier to keep things secret when you don't have to send the product to China for manufacturing. <laughs> Certainly, and especially when you're talking about a product that the, the vast majority of the media don't understand anyway, uh, that I think helps as well. Yeah, well, Tim Stevens, I want to thank you for coming on Tech News today. Thank you for having me. All right, you can find Tim Stevens' work at CNET.com, and you can find Tim on Twitter at Tim underscore Stevens.